Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video to follow up on my recent iNav, Radix and Bixler build. Now for those of you that have been watching along, you'll know that it flew beautifully well in the maiden flight and in this series I go through each of the steps that I tend to go through when setting up iNav to avoid disaster. But there's one thing that I didn't do, and that was to wire up this thing here. Now, this is the pan and tilt servo. This is the one from Hobby King and fits beautifully into the nose of a Bixler. Now, it's nothing particularly fancy, but the pan and tilt setup is going to work beautifully to look around when I'm flying FPV. Now, in the mixer inside iNav, it is very, very powerful. And in the previous couple of videos, we set up the stabilized roll, stabilized pitch, and stabilized yaw for the elevator, rudder, and ailerons in the craft, and that's all working fine. Now, there are two additional wires that we have connected up as part of that build, and those are for servos five and six. Now, the really nice thing about the Radix build is that it remaps the outputs very slightly so that uh, there's only one motor output the other three that are on the wing power distribution board are available for servos two three and four or s2 s3 and s4 and that's perfect for a bixler if you only got three lots of flight controls and then there are two extras s5 and s6 on the flight controller that I've wired up for the pan and tilt stuff. So let me very quickly show you how I've got this all working. So uh, one, you can follow along, but two, if you're trying to get your head around how this mixer works and you haven't quite got it yet, hopefully it'll work for you. Servo forwarding is really, really simple and powerful in iNav. And in that mixer tab, it's a real piece of cake. So first of all, what I've done is on the radio, I've gone and set up two additional channels, channels seven and eight, and they're connected to the two sliders on the shoulder of the radio. And this channel seven I've set up for pan and channel eight I've set up for tilt. Now, knowing those two things, we can jump into iNav, connect up the flight controller and add two additional mixes. Now I just need to double check which channel is which for which control on the radio and then I can set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the next number of servo. It doesn't matter. It just is going to sort them out in the order of the number lowest to highest. So I'm just going to take the next one which is four, set that up for RC channel seven and then I'm going to set up servo five for RC channel eight and I'm going to click save and reboot. So that now should expose those two channels, channel seven and channel eight that we just looked at on the radio on the outputs. And in fact, you can see it at the top here on S5, we have servo four and on S6, we have servo five. And that corresponds to the number four and five that we've just set up in the servo mixer. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we need to do then is we need to go and plug in the pan and tilt servo into the corresponding outputs. Now, because channel seven is set up for pan and channel seven is been output on S5 in that mixer tab, then I'm going to plug the pan servo into S5 and the tilt servo into S6. And this is a little bit confusing. The servo number in the servo table and then where it appears in the outputs of the flight controller, depending on the numbers that you use, because just going to assign the servos to the outputs uh, in numerical order with the lowest servo number first. But now we've got that, then the next job is to power everything up, to plug it back into the computer, and then just use the servo tab to either reverse the servo, check the middle position. I would always make sure that live output is enabled. So as you change things, you can see it move in real time and also change the maximum and minimum movement as well. Just to make sure that you're not overdriving the servo and potentially moving the servo to a point where you might actually catch the cables or pull them uh, that might pop the cable out the back of the camera. So once you've done all that, then you can disconnect and go back to the bench and test it and it's all working beautifully. Now, of course, you could connect this up to a head tracker and I have a video on how to use head trackers with things like this, but hopefully that's interesting and help for those of you that are setting it up. Just add an extra couple of channels from your radio. Using the servo mixer, add two extra mixes to expose those two channels on the radio, those RC channels onto spare servo pins on the flight controller itself and then plug the pan and tilt servos into those outputs. And finally, if you want to, then you could go the final step and set it up with a head tracker. 
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.